Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being with us uh, from your homes um, all over the country, all over the world. Um, we're really grateful to have you here with us. We're really excited to finally be back performing, even if it is from a distance. Um, please, throughout the concert, engage with the chat. We'll be able to talk to you virtually a little bit later on. Um, this first piece was the first movement from Michael Nyman's Songs for Tony, which will be featured on our debut album. <laughs> so we hope you enjoy the concert. We hope you are staying safe, have an opportunity to de-stress a little bit, at least for the next hour, hour and a half, and enjoy the concert. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dr. Garrett Hope and I'm the composer of Pyromania. This piece was inspired by my love of fire. And ever since I was a little kid, I've been fascinated with how fire works. It starts from a single spark, a single idea, and then spreads into a frenzy. And we've seen it in its destructive power and yet it still remains beautiful. This piece starts with a single idea, builds out to a great big moment, and then winds its way back down again with a melody that passes between all the instruments and a constant frenetic sense of motion.
Hello everybody, greetings from sunny Australia. My name is Kathy Lukuda and I'm a composer of Hard to Argue for Saxophone Quartet, which will be performed on the 6th of November by Pharaoh's Quartet at the Virtual Boston New Music Festival. I think it's safe to say that none of us will ever take a single performance of new music for granted ever again after COVID. And uh, I really wish I could uh, attend the new music festival right now and see a performance live. But at the same time, I'm very grateful that uh, I can tune in online and I, could, um, I can watch the performance by Ferris Quartet um, from Australia. And uh, Hard to Argue was written uh, originally for five French horns. It's a very virtuosic piece for horns, even for saxophones. Then I made a transcription a year later for um, a saxophone quartet. And uh, it's um, basically inspired by uh, my husband's uh, witty and graceful arguments with uh, his mother. Um, it's uh, funky. It's... Uh, cute, it's funny, it uh, requires a lot of uh, counting and a lot of rehearsals, so I'm extremely grateful to Pharaoh's Quartet for choosing to play my piece, and I hope you enjoy it. Stay safe, everyone. Bye!
Hi everyone, welcome back. We are back from our little intermission and uh, camera issue, um, but uh, <laughs> but uh, thank you everyone for tuning in so far. Uh, we really appreciate your support. And uh, we just want to give a couple of shout outs. Uh, first of all, we have uh, some birthdays today. Uh, my husband, Joe, is his birthday. And also one of our um, favorite composer friends, John Wallace. Um, and as someone pointed out uh, a few minutes ago on the chat, uh, Adolph Sachs. Um, big shout outs to our families who are joining us, um, to my, uh, my step hive that is logged in on YouTube. Thank you very much. Um, and I, we have some students logged in as well, um, Alex and K Kyle, Kyle and, uh, and yeah, and, and some colleagues as well. So thank you, everyone. Um, our next piece that we're doing is a fairly new Philip Glass piece. It was written for the Kronos Quartet, which is a contemporary string ensemble. Uh, they have a project called 50 for the Future where they have commissioned 50 composers, 10 each year for the, over a five year period uh, to compose works that will be made available free for anyone to download on their website. Uh, you can download them, print them off. They are completely available to anyone who wants them. Um, with their permission, I have arranged this uh, piece, Quartet Sots for Saxophone Quartet. And uh, we hope you enjoy it. And thank you to the Kronos Quartet.
Hi, I'm Stephen David Beck, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about my piece, Chasing Baby Bumblebees. When I was growing up, our house had a big hill in the backyard that was covered in ice plant. The ice plant had these beautiful purple flowers with yellow centers that was really attractive to bumblebees. And as a little child, I was fascinated by bumblebees. It was not uncommon for me to wander out into the backyard and put my hand out and try to coax a bumblebee to land on my hand. That is, until one stung me. And that's how I got the name Chasing Baby Bumblebees. I hope you enjoy the piece.
Hi.
Hi, everyone. Thanks again for coming out or staying in and watching us tonight. Uh, before we play our last piece on the program, uh, we just wanted to let you know that uh, we'll be hanging out afterwards to answer uh, some live questions on the YouTube chat. Um, uh, thank you for all the questions so far. It's been really hard to uh, keep up with, but we are noticing your questions, and um, we hope to be able to answer them in a little bit more detail after our next piece. Um, also, just a quick shout out uh, to Barney Landman, who is running production for us tonight at the Zen Den Studio in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. Thank you, Barney. Mm. Igor, increase the wattage to 1.21. Oh. Hello, I didn't see you there. I'm Dr. Erica Spano, and I'm the composer of Mary Shelley Meets Frankenstein. Mary Shelley Meets Frankenstein imagines a scenario where the young author meets her own creation, the monster brought to life whom we commonly refer to as Frankenstein. They meet, circling each other in a dance reflective of a tango. Mary is initially curious and sympathetic, while the creature pleads for compassion. In the moment when the two come together, Mary's sympathy is overwhelmed by horror and she begins to panic while the creature becomes furious with her rejection. With the final notes, we are left asking ourselves, who is the real monster? Please enjoy this electrifying performance of Mary Shelley meets Frankenstein.
Hi, all. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming. So we've been getting a lot of questions about the album. And uh, so I, we want to tackle that first. So we were um, in the middle of recording that album last winter. And we had everything done except for the last, uh, the last tune to go on the album. Um, and uh, COVID prevented us from being able to finish that. So we are looking forward to um, getting back in the studio at some point uh, with Mike Testa and um, finishing up that last piece. So it is in the works and as soon as we can get it done, we'll get it done. Um, so keep, keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> yes, we'll post stuff on social media when that comes out. So if you are not following us on Facebook or Instagram, um, definitely do and then we'll We'll update you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At Ferrell's Quartet for everything, basically. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, put it in the chat. We'll see it live right now. I'm scrolling back through. And uh, we'll do some shout outs. Lana. Hi, Lana. Thanks for saying. Alex Mullen. Trista. <laughs> <laughs> and Elizabeth, thanks for watching my puppy. And hi, hi, Trista. Hi, Trista. And hi, Mom and Dad in California. Hi, Mom and Dad in Virginia, oh. and maybe my brothers, yeah. too. Yeah. So, and hi, Mom and Dad in Pennsylvania. And hi, Mom and Dad in Stoughton, Massachusetts. Yeah. <laughs> and just in, case they're, just in case they're still watching, Paul and Weston, you guys are the best. Woohoo! Those are my nephews. Oh. <laughs> ah. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Tara mentioned that uh, the Bumblebee song seemed a fitting uh, song for me, um, and it is one of the reasons we picked it. Uh, <laughs> in in addition to it just being a fun piece, it, it just kind of attracted our attention. But I am a beekeeper, um, so uh, so as soon as we saw Bumblebee or anything with bee in it, it was like, oh, let's check this out. So uh, so thank you, uh, thank you, Stephen Beck, for that piece. That was a lot of fun. Uh, we have a question from Rava. How did we choose the name of our quartet, Zach? Oh. <laughs> so we chose the name Pharos. Um, so one of, one of, there's a couple of considerations, like when you're naming any sort of ensemble or if anyone's like in a band or anything like that. Um, one thing is making sure that whatever word or name you choose, always um, it's no matter if somebody you know, maybe doesn't speak English or pronounces things differently. Um, it always generally will sound the same um, and it won't be an offensive word in any language. <laughs> That's also very important. Um, we chose it uh, specifically. We, you know, I, I think we like the idea of like things having to do with antiquity and history and um, ancient Greece in particular and the idea that a lot of um, knowledge and art comes from that time. Uh, and Pharaoh specifically, um, references the, the lighthouse at Alexandria. Um, so the idea of being a beacon, uh, a light, um, that's where we got the name. Great. All right. um, have we ever commissioned a piece? Well, yes. Yes, yeah. um, yes. yes we have commissioned at least two pieces. <laughs> Um, we yeah. have three, three, three. Well, we we're in a consortium for a third. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, we should be performing that in the spring, hopefully. Yes. Um, but, uh, the first piece, uh, we commissioned, uh, was for saxophone quartet and electronics and they are live electronics that we control. Um, but it is a piece, uh, based on, um, rhythmic sounds from around the world. So we have uh, Senegal and Cuba and Istanbul, Istanbul and Brooklyn. Yes. Um, and that is the piece that we are waiting to record in the studio right now. Mm -hmm. um, the second piece we commissioned was for sax quartet and piano. And it was by Tom Weaver. Um, Tom! Yay, Tom. Yes. <laughs> um, and uh, Tom actually premiered that with us last January, which was our last performance together yeah. before today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it's always been a great experience working with the composers, so um, we, we really like that. Uh, and it was it's a lot of fun working with two composers that we already knew mm -hmm. pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, the first piece was uh, Justin Cassangino, um, so who works at uh, BU. Um, 
Yeah. Um, speaking of, people are asking how we got in touch with the composers for this concert. Um, email. And Twitter. <laughs> and Twitter. <laughs> All yeah. the composers hang out on Twitter. So if you want to find composers, um, go on Twitter, hashtag your post with hashtag new music, and uh, the responses will start coming in. We got, mm -hmm. when I asked for scores back in August, we got a tremendous response. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we looked at like 30 pieces yep. um, before we decided on this program. So, mm -hmm. And there's a lot of stuff that we want to do in the future as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. There are so many composers composing so many pieces all the time. For as many saxophone players as go through music school, there are as many composers. So people are always writing, and there's just so much great music that's being produced. And it's really, I think it makes it even more exciting you know, that we have several of the composers you watching, because that means that we're actually like engaging with your work and you're engaging with ours, and it's not something that's you know, just a, you know, a couple hundred years old or that we're not able to necessarily have everybody there. So mm -hmm. it's really cool. Uh, do we ever switch around who plays what instrument? No. 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 <laughs> at, our, at our first ever rehearsal, we all brought all the horns we had and played around for a little bit. Yeah. Um, and this was how we sounded best. So, yeah. yeah. Right. This is it. Um, we do. The, actually, the first piece on our program tonight was the first movement of Songs for Tony by Michael Nyman. And that piece does require some instrument switches, but we engineered it so that uh, Emily didn't oh, have yeah, to I switch. I don't have um, to play baritone. Um, so there's a movement of that that has double double baritone, yeah. and Zach and I uh, play the baritones on that. And I think we swapped out a, a really low soprano part for alto um, as well with the permission of the composer. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we don't change up a lot, yeah. put it that way. Was it hard to play and breathe with the masks on? Yes. No. Yes. No. Wear no. your mask. No. <laughs> Wear your mask. It's yes. not a problem. No. I mean, um, I mean, it's like it's weird and and takes some getting used to, but it's not that big a deal. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, it's kind of hard, but you can do it. Yeah, yeah you can do it. Um, we all 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 are wearing normal masks, and then to play, we just fold it in half. Yeah. I pinned mine because yeah, but that's all it is. Let's see. Other questions. Other questions. Paul and Weston, you guys are the best. <laughs> Got to do the shout outs. Amy, what was covering your horn? Oh, mm. um, your so um, that is just a bell cover. It's, um, it's a piece of like spandex material. Um, it is um, recommended uh, for kind of preventing the spread of aerosols. And I happen to have one extra because of my work. Um, I am a um, director of bands at Fitchburg State, and um, we ordered a bunch of those at the beginning of the year for all of uh, my instrumentalists in the band program. So, um, so it it helps, you know, keep the aerosol dispersion down a little bit, um, but it does impact the low B flat on the saxophone. So, if I have anything with a low B flat in it, I have to take it off. It doesn't come out. Mm -hmm. Right. There was, oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say, there was a, a second part to the question about commissioning mm. regarding, um, like, what was our experience like? So I think one of the, the things that was really great about the two pieces that we fully independently commissioned, not including this consortium piece, um, we, we basically sat down with the composers, and they looked at... Um, and, you know, they, they asked us to, to play some things, ask us what we like to play, um, you know, what is important for us as saxophone players? I think we, you know, we all have this idea that um, there, there's a lot of really good repertoire for saxophone, but it's also an instrument that can be largely misunderstood, so it's important to show the beauty of it. So that was something that we talked to the composers about. Um, what range each of our instruments has, um, uh, not only like the actual range of the instrument, but also the sounding range and where they all sit next to each other. Mm -hmm. um, also what effects we can do. So you heard some of the things we did tonight, like um, the uh, slap tongue, a lot of slap and pop tongue. Mm -hmm. um, there were some growling effects, some trilling effects, things of that nature. So um, it's just exploring all of that. So it's a combination of like what we can do, what we want to do, and what the composer's ideas are bouncing back um, back and forth with us. 
Yeah. Great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Important question about what, how did each of you decide which shoes to wear tonight? I will um, go. I'll go first sure. because sure. these are normally not the shoes I wear. Normally, I wear uh, sneakers, but I alas, I left my sneakers out in the snow last week, <laughs> so they're they're recovering. Oh. They're recovering. So, but normally, I wear sneakers. Emily, I um was in kind of a hurry tonight. I got stuck in some traffic coming up here and I was wearing some sneakers to drive uh, and I just left my nice shoes in the backseat of my car and didn't notice until right now. (laughs) I always wear these boots. There you go. I like lots of different shoes, but I always make sure that I have inside here the craziest insoles for standing for like an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, craziest. We're all about comfort in shoes. (laughs) Right. Right. Good. Great. Uh, just a quick shout out to Janet and Warren. Thanks for uh, tuning in tonight. We're scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite part about playing with each other? Oh, it's it's just nice. We're nice to each other. Um, I I don't know if you're a musician, you probably understand why that's like actually a big deal to say. Um, mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of yeah. a lot of culture in in classical music at least where you know people in groups together aren't nice to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean I think that's definitely the best thing. I think we're all pretty good at taking criticism and working together, um, and you know not taking it personally and also not getting mad at each other about right. you know like people make mistakes and we're all human. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think we're all really um, interested in doing the same kinds of repertoire, which really yeah. helps. Yeah, right. I think that's really one of the most important things is that, you know, we're all interested in the same type of performance material and it makes it easy when we go to put together a program. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've known each other, over, oh. well, in, I mean, in terms of the four of us all knowing each other, we've known each other over a decade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and so that's cool. And then we've been an actual quartet now for four years. Um, so I think part of this also comes with time and it's like, you know, there was, there was a question, question earlier just about switching around instruments or even switching around seats. And one of the things is that this means like myself, for example, like I've had now four years, like in this seat Mm -hmm. with Emily to my right and Amy to my left. And just knowing how that feels and how that always sounds Mm -hmm. is, um, it just makes everything so natural to play together. Yeah. Emily, where in Pennsylvania are you from? I am from Allentown. Uh, specifically, I am from South Whitehall, like about a block outside of the city limits. <laughs> Emily, are you a, a Rhode Island or Massachusetts or Pennsylvania resident? I am a Rhode Island resident. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. Are people are curious. Are people are, are people asking about that? Well, where are you from? They want to know how you vote. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> So my, my student Alex asked about the masks. I don't know if he meant like the way we have them folded or the music themed masks that Emily and I have on. But oh. my mom made this. So my thanks, mom. mom also made this. All right. <laughs> See, moms are the best. Uh, what styles do you enjoy playing or have explored playing? Oh, God. That's kind of a big question. So that yeah. might be another time because yeah. we don't want to. We'll it's 930. A, yeah, we'll do a <laughs> seminar. Um, yeah. But actually an important question. Thank you, brother. What other projects do you all have going on that we can check out? The first one that's coming up <laughs> is your trio. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. So I have a separate project. Um, I have a woodwind trio. It's uh, flute, clarinet, and saxophone. Um, we are actually playing on Sunday as part of the Boston New Music Festival. It'll be at 3 p.m. And you can find it right on our website, triagewoodwind.com, um, or on our Facebook page. Just do a little search, um, and, uh, and you can link it right there. Uh, lots of fun. So it's uh, triagewoodwind.com, no S. Yeah, Amy will throw that in the chat. Um, I have a couple other projects that I am consistently working on. Um, Brush Read with Linnea. Hey, Linnea and Craig, if you guys are watching in Minneapolis. Um, 
Jen we, was cranking it all summer with Rush Read. Man. Yeah, we did six shows, live stream shows on our Twitch channel, um, and we were going to do a spring series. So you can check out our website, brushread.com. I'll throw that in the chat. Um, and then for my personal stuff, you can always just go to jenniferbill.com. McLaughlinMusic.com. Uh, my website is zacksax.com. Um, oh, my website is called emilycoxsaxophone.com. Uh, don't, don't, I mean, you can go there if you want. But, uh, if you are interested in my, my doings, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at guacdaddy. Yeah. With we an all, IE at the end. We all have our own Instagrams and obviously Facebook and Twitter and whatnot. So, but Pharaoh's Quartet first, and then yeah. you'll see all of our stuff within yeah. that. Yeah. Also, the zendenstudios.com. <laughs> zendenstudios.com. If the anyone. Zendenstudios.com. Oh, the, oh, sorry. Yep. The zendenstudios.com. Um, Barney has been amazing. The space is great. The green screen is so fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> so, um, we have no idea what it looks like behind us right now, so we have no idea what Barney's doing. <laughs> That's but... right. Nothing nefarious. <laughs> But uh, check out the zenden.com um, for anyone that's in the Boston greater area. Let me rephrase. Anyone that's in uh, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, or Maine, or Vermont, or Connecticut, check them out because... Or Rhode Island. Or Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's basically the same distance from everywhere. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, no, it's been great. It's been a great experience here. Thank you, Barney. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we're good. So yeah. thank you all for yeah. tuning in tonight and uh, keep checking out our website and we'll uh, start planning for our next concert in 2021. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Thanks.